Adult Swim is no stranger to broadcasting weird and wonderful shows. In fact, it's quite literally their MO. However, even in a sea of wacky shows, Xavier Renegade Angel stands out as being the fever dream of all fever dreams. Allow me to explain. You see, Xavier Renegade Angel ran for only two seasons between 2007 and 2009, and was created by John Lee and Vernon Chapman, who, as a side note, is the voice of Tao Lee, one of my all-time favourite South Park characters. And despite the show only running for two seasons and having been off the air for 14 years now, Xavier Renegade Angel has cultivated arguably the most die-hard fanbase of any Adult Swim show. So, I think it's time that we find out the answer to the age-old question, what doth life? And what better place to start than in season 1, where we're introduced to Xavier, a pseudo-philosophical shaman animated in the style of a PS2 cutscene who wanders through the desert seeking to find out who killed his father, and in the process giving us some truly incredible wisdom. Mister, sorry our computer's fritzing on y'all. I'll be fine. I'm a survivor. We're a dying breed. And as you may have guessed from this opening, Xavier is incredibly foolish, but yet believes that every action he takes is guiding himself on a metaphysical journey of great magnitude. And this is because Xavier has what the kids would call main character syndrome, or what functioning members of society over the age of 13 would call narcissistic and sociopathic tendencies, with Xavier truly believing that he helps every single person that he comes into contact with and that their lives have been blessed for having just met him. And this even extends to the title, I mean, what kind of man calls himself a renegade angel? However, despite Xavier's narcissistic belief that he helps everyone he comes into contact with, the reality of his impact is often a lot darker, as every episode brings with it another opportunity for Xavier to completely destroy the society in which he lives all while spouting some philosophical nonsense and patronising those who he is allegedly trying to help in the process. Look at the two of us. We could be like Beauty and the Beast. What do you say? Will you be my beast? And when I was doing a little digging on Xavier's pseudo-philosophy, I came across a passage in Dante's Inferno, and there was a section in Bolgia 4, Sorcerers, which states that Dante looks down at the souls of fortune tellers, diviners, astrologers, and other false prophets. The punishment of those who attempted to usurp God's prerogative by prying into the future is to have their heads twisted around on their bodies, and these sinners are compelled to walk backwards for eternity, blinded by their own tears. And this really struck me when I read it, because Xavier's whole design is based around his body being disjointed, with his legs facing the opposite way to his body, so that Xavier is perpetually in a state of backwards motion, even when he believes that he is progressing and helping others. And the worst part about all of this is that no one is even asking for his help in the first place, with Xavier literally just interjecting where it's not needed, all to fuel his saviour complex and thus his ego. And this also brings with it a rather interesting dichotomy between the angel moniker that Xavier brands himself with and the hell that he inflicts on all of his surroundings, as not only does he destroy everything he touches, but he also belittles those around him in the process. You ruffians, <laughs> leave that poor gimp alone. Who you calling gimp, weirdo? He probably can't tell you're mocking him. He's obviously slow. And having Xavier be an unlikable character is absolutely a conscious choice by the show's creators, as Xavier is intended to be a parody of the modern day gurus and other pretentious members of society that believe that they hold true knowledge, and will turn just about any subject into a monologue about themselves. And painting your character in this light can be a rather dangerous game. I mean, just look at Brian Griffin from Family Guy. A once beloved family dog gets given an excess dose of hubris from the writers, and as a result of this, almost all of the Family Guy fanbase now hates Brian and his pretentious personality. However, Xavier manages to avoid the pitfalls that Brian not so gracefully lunged into by maintaining his comedic integrity. I mean, just listen to some of the amazing one-liners that he comes up with. Oh, rather, laying flowers where our son was killed. And I suppose you blame yourselves for his death. I know I do. And this is all very well and good, but we still haven't talked about arguably the main component of the show, the landscape. And much like Xavier's off-putting personality, the disjointed visuals of the show are an intentional choice, 
with many people theorizing that the Fever Dream style computerized animation is to whittle out the people who wouldn't get the message of the show. And whilst I understand that argument, I myself believe that the animation style is used to detail just how grotesque humans can truly be, with the animation being used to exemplify the horrific treatment of others within the show, which Xavier both inflicts and is on the receiving end of, with the phrase, we don't cotton to freaks around here, being a particular favorite. We don't cotton to freaks round these parts. Scram, weirdo. And the theme of abuse is rampant within XRA. And the way that the writers handle abuse is incredibly interesting, as most pieces of media, especially ones developed and broadcast for Western audiences, treat abuse as something that fuels the protagonist to become an even greater version of themselves, shaking off the shackles of oppression and becoming even more powerful as a result of their mistreatment. But, this is not Xavier, and the showrunners actually go out of their way to showcase just how weird and damaged Xavier has become as a result of his abuse. And by doing this, the show subverts the trope of using abuse as a fuel source in a really intelligent way, ultimately creating the message that hey, maybe we should reflect on our own actions and not abuse people in the first place. Then there wouldn't be this unnecessary mental struggle placed on the victim, which in Xavier's case has only served to make him an even weirder and more sociopathic version of himself. Do you want one, Dad? 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 Don't make this poor pathetic vendor wait. All while simultaneously fueling his savior complex, as he believes that everything around him is evil and needs to be fought against, not worked with. And Xavier's strange philosophical blabberings, combined with his inflated ego, sets us up perfectly for the unanimously agreed upon magnum opus of the show, Season 1, Episode 10, Shakashuri Blowdown which immediately shatters the expected narrative flow by telling us in the first 30 seconds that Xavier is the one that killed his own dad. It was you who killed me. What kind of stupid name is you who? Well, when I find that demon, I shall slay him to death. But don't worry, we don't stay on this topic too long because I mean, <laughs> come on, that would be silly. So after finding out he's his father's killer, Xavier realizes that it is he who must be killed. But luckily for us, Xavier's death is postponed by the rednecks returning and in a very Monty Python way, they once more beat Xavier to a pulp. And the most significant part of this episode, in my view, is the fact that Xavier views himself as too cosmically significant to die. So instead of ending his own life, he splits himself in half and attempts to kill his other self, which in turn leads to one of the best exchanges that we've ever seen in animation. I ever get your stinky mug in my line of sight, I swear to check off. I'll cock your clock off. Well, I'm going to be the bigger man and hang up first. Damn it. And this exchange has lived on in internet history, with many people quoting my personal favorite line, are you so dumb you even answer rhetorical questions? I don't know, do you? And Shakashuri Blowdown is the prime example of what I love about the show, in that Xavier straight up refuses to grow, and even when confronted about the fact that he killed his own father, Xavier is still able to do the requisite mental gymnastics to make it all about him and his battle against his own ego which, I mean, is just a brilliant piece of irony from the writers. So, as we progress on to season 2, perhaps we will get a more relaxed approach to storytelling, and Xavier will ease up on the name calling and yeah, we both know that isn't going to happen. In fact, season 2 becomes even more disjointed than season 1, if that's even possible, as Xavier's dialect is further deconstructed and the showrunners play around with the soundboard to the point where characters and their dialogue are entirely interchangeable with each other, and sometimes you can't even tell who's talking. And not only this, but season 2 also continues the joke per second style that works so well in season 1, with the closest comedic example I can think of being Police Squad, which ran for only one season in 1983 and was cancelled because the networks feared the audiences couldn't keep up with how many jokes were being told every second. Essentially, the show was deemed too smart for most audiences, and during the one season run, the writers of the show were actually told to write less jokes. 
However, as an audience member and avid fan of both shows, the effort that the writing staff puts into every second of their show certainly doesn't go unnoticed, with both Police Squad and Xavier Renegade Angel growing cult audiences years after their cancellation due to the rewatchability of both shows. And even to this day, I still find little jokes and references that I missed when watching XRA for the first time round. And unfortunately for myself and the rest of the XRA fanbase, we only ever got two seasons to go back and rewatch. However, unlike many other Adult Swim shows that get cancelled, at least we got a conclusion of sorts, as in the finale, Xavier battles and annoys his very own thoughts. I'm just a projection of your feelings. Yeah, put it all on me. Someone's in denial. Will you please just shut up? And all of this comes before having his true self revealed by a doctor, which I thought was an incredible end to the series. I think you're ready to see yourself for the first time. Not how you imagine yourself, but how you truly are. Hot dang, I'm cured. Cured? Who said there was anything wrong with you? However, of course, since XRA is an adult swim show, it naturally got cancelled after two seasons. And since it's the holiday season, Adult Swim has concocted a little jingle for you. I hope you enjoy. It's beginning to look like you've been cancelled. Sad to see you go. Though your fan base is on the rise, it's time for your demise. Just because Adult Swim says so, it's beginning to look like you've been cancelled. Cancellations blow, but we've had to make some more room for all of the dumb cartoons that replace your show. We cancelled Joe Pira and Venture Bros, Tuka and Bertie, and Super Joe went in the bin. Mike Tyson mysteries, now it's just history, where do I even begin? We just run a big revolving door at Adult Swim, it's beginning to look like you've been cancelled. Reddit's up in arms. And the happiest we will be is when we get to see that we've worked our charm. So, with all of that said, if so many people love Xavier Renegade Angel, then why did it get cancelled? Well, back in the late 2000s, the show wasn't as beloved as it is now with XRA just kind of existing among the many other shows that comprised the Adult Swim roster at the time. And on top of this, meme culture and social media practically didn't exist in the way it does now, where it's almost become the norm for memes to be subversive to the point of nausea. And funnily enough, modern meme culture has actually been a catalyst in the resurrection of XRA, with a lot of people, including myself, finding out about XRA and deciding to give it a watch in the first place because we saw a funny haha meme on the subject. So, as much as I'd love to say that Xavier Renegade Angel was cancelled for being too smart, similar to Police Squad, or it was simply misunderstood in its time, man, I simply just don't believe either of these things to be true. But rather, I think the XRA was just undermarketed, as a result of Adult Swim understandably not wanting to sink too much money into something that would most likely not see a return on investment, since the show doesn't exactly have the most mainstream appeal. However, what I will commend Adult Swim for is giving XRA a shot in the first place. I mean, what other networks would even think of taking a chance on a show this bizarre? And as a result of Adult Swim taking a gamble on XRA, an entire generation of creatives have been gifted with inspiration. I mean, just look at shows like Skeleton Landlord and even elements of Rick and Morty, and you'll see the clear everlasting impact that XRA has had on animation. So. Adult Swim or any other networks if you're watching, please, take more chances. I know, I know, it's scary and your boss might give you a spank on the bottom, but ultimately, in the words of Xavier, every luxury has a deep price, every indulgence a cosmic cost. And as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay spiritual.